Hello, my name is Tony Felici, and I'm the senior pastor here at Holiday Park United Methodist Church in Plum Borough, where Christ is King, the Holy Spirit inspires, people's lives are being transformed on a daily basis, all to the glory of God. And we're so glad that you have joined us for this broadcast today on Cornerstone TV's Faith and Family Channel. Won't you join us to worship our Lord? Donnie and I thank all of you uh, for the love and the support uh, uh, that we get all the time from Holiday Park United Methodist Church. And we're just thrilled to be here. But hear these words. To all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. Come to Christ, that living stone, rejected by the world, but in God's sight, chosen and precious. We have responded to Christ's call and seek to be built into a spiritual house, in the living reminder of God's presence on earth. Once we were no people, but now we are God's people, called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Therefore, we sing with the church of all ages. Blessed be the name of God, our Redeemer. By your mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Amen. As uh, forgiven and reconciled children of God, why don't you offer uh, peace and thanksgiving to one another?
Well, kids, uh, come on up and be with us all. Wow, you guys did a nice job with those two songs. Huh. Okay, wow, we got a bunch of kids here today. So you all are wide awake? Yeah. You all happy to be here? Yeah. yeah? Listen, you sang that song about Zacchaeus, right? What, what did Zacchaeus do? He climbed up into the tree, right? What else happened? Jesus called him down. He says, I'm going to stay at your house, right? And then, did you think everyone liked that, that he was going to go to Zacchaeus' house? No. Why? Because they made up and took, like, Jesus' tax man, basically, and they took money. Wow, you know a lot of stuff. He was a tax man, and he took money. In other words, he took advantage of his position, right? And the people didn't like him. What are you thinking? Um, well, I know what, ha what, uh, what Jesus said to him whenever they were at his house. What did he say to him? He said he would give, he, he would give back all, all the, all, double the money that he took from him. Yeah, actually, Zacchaeus told Jesus he was going to do that, didn't he? Yeah, he says, I'm going to pay back fourfold everything that I've taken, and I'm going to give the money to the poor. So he was a changed person, wasn't he? Because he became what the end of the scripture said that he was a child of Abraham. What does that mean to be a child of Abraham? It means that he's blessed to be a person of God. That he's in the family of God. It's like when we baptize little children up here and we baptize adults, they become part of God's family. And their identity is in God. <clears throat> their identity, you know what your identity is? You know, before uh, Donnie and I were on vacation, and she called me the day before we left, and she says, we got news from Dollar Bank that someone compromised your Dollar Bank card. And so we weren't gonna be able to have our Dollar Bank card because they told us that they were sending us a new one. I had already stopped our mail. And they said they were going to send us a new card, but we weren't going to get it till we came back. And, and so, like, someone had tried to take my identity. You know, like, when we were traveling, we had to carry these things, and inside here is who I am. So this, this, is, this is me, okay? This is a United States passport, and it says that I belong to, uh, as a citizen of the United States, and even though I go to a different country, I'm allowed back into the United States. That's a good thing, right? If you go outside of the United States, you want to be able to come back in, right? You don't want to have to stay outside the country. So this says that I am a certified member of the United States of America, and I'm allowed back in. I'm also allowed into other countries as a guest. So when I come in there, they know who I am. They look at this passport, they look to make sure it's me, and then they say, okay, you're allowed to come in here, only you better be on your best United States behavior, okay? Now, I also have this thing here that I have around my neck. What do you think that means? What is that? Jesus Cross, right? And, and so it says that I'm a Christian. When people see this, they say, either I like this jewelry or this guy must be a Christian, he must believe in Jesus Christ. And so my identity is in Jesus Christ. And, and Jesus says to his people that if you believe in me and the power of my name, you have the right to be called children of God. Are you all children of God? Yeah. Are you, are you happy to be children of God? Yeah. So, so like, just like when I go into another country, I have to act like a good citizen of the United States by being friendly, by being courteous, by following their laws, okay? And when I'm a citizen of Christ's place, what, what kind of activity should I be about? Should I be loving people? Yeah. Should I uh, be welcoming? Should I listen to their laws? Yeah. Right? You should be kind. Too. I should be kind, right? And what else can I do?
Can I share God with them? Do you think Jesus wants me to share the good news of the gospel with him? So how do I do that? I can tell them about him. I can be like Zacchaeus and be changed. How else can I do it? I can bring them to church or I can bring church to them. To them. How would I bring church to them? You can read them, to, you can read them the Bible. I could read them the Bible. How about like if, if I'm sitting in a restaurant and I pray over the meal? Do you think that's one way I could do it? Yeah. Okay, or if I see someone and I introduce myself and then I pray a blessing over them, do you think that could do it? Yeah. Yeah, do you think people like to get blessings? Yeah, what do you think, Cole? I just have a question. Yeah, have, what's the question? <laughs> Cole has a question. He wants to know, where did I go? Well, we went to a, a little island uh, off the coast of South America. It's called St. Lucia. And I was telling Dottie, I said, you know, I think this island was covered, uh, discovered by Columbus because, you know, it's, it's named St. Lucia, you know, after the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Lucia. She goes, it's, the, <laughs> it's not the Santa Lucia, it's the Santa Maria. I said, well, that was a good theory anyway. St. <laughs> Lucia is a, is a really nice island. And uh, on the island, they have these two big mountains. And we went snorkeling right on the bottom of one of those mountains. And we saw all kinds of crazy fish. <laughs> all kinds of beautiful fish. It was clear as clear as clear could be. But you know what? As much as it was so nice to be there, it's even better to be back here with all of you guys. You know why? Because you're the children of God. Your identity is in Christ. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. And it's always good to be gathered with people of the same family, because we're in the family of God together. Okay, you guys are going to go to uh, Sunday school. We have snacks for you guys. But before you do, can I pray a blessing upon all of you? Yes. Okay. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the gift of these children. You say in your word, suffer the little children. Let them come to me. And Lord, our prayer is that all of our children will be your children first. For you created them in your own image, in your own likeness. Be with them and in them, encourage and strengthen them. Be also with their teachers who have them now after this time together, that they may learn about their identity in Jesus Christ and that they may grow well into that identity, that all that know them will know that their God truly is God to the glory of God. For we pray these things in the powerful and matchless name of Jesus Christ, by the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit, all to the glory of God the Father in heaven. Amen. You guys ready for Sunday school? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Okay, pray for your teachers. And uh, who gets the snacks today? Thank you. Aren't they, aren't they a lot of fun? <laughs> uh, would you please stand with me for uh, the singing of our first hymn this morning, Holy, 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 hymn number 64.
invite you to be seated. And I invite you to hear these words that come to us from the book of Genesis, the 17th chapter, various verses. Hear these words. Now when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you, and you will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. God also said to Abraham, uh, God also said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Abraham fell face down and he laughed to himself. Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. And Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At that very time, God had, uh, at that very time, God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. And when his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham and Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne a son in his old age. And so ends the reading of this, his holy word. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful fall day. Your creation is an absolute masterpiece, and we thank you that we are a part of it. You created us, and we know that you love us. You watch over us, and you call us your children. We are all so undeserving, and yet your grace is freely given. As long as we have faith in you as our Lord and Savior, we will live into our inheritance. But Father, we need your spirit to tug at our hearts every day. We need reminded that our identity is first and foremost in you and all the other stuff that we worry about and that sometimes consumes us is secondary as long as we put ourselves in your hands and we have faith. Father, not only do we put ourselves in your care, but we lift to you all those who we know who need to feel your presence in their lives. Whether they are sick, or maybe they need comfort or encouragement, or maybe they just need to feel your peace. Thank you for always hearing our prayers. And be with us now as we pray together Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power.
our stewardship nugget for today comes to us from the book of Acts, the third chapter, verse 6. Dr. Luke writes these words. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Uh, Peter had just uh, preached in the square. And over 3,000 people came to Jesus uh, in that preaching event. And the church was beginning to grow. And they were walking out in, in the colonnade area. And there was a man that every day was brought out into the colonnade who was um, crippled at birth. Uh, and he's about 38 years old or so. And he's there and, uh, well, the rules were uh, that if you see someone like that, someone begging along the road, they have no means of support. So they were dependent upon the people to support them. So they would be giving alms. And that was an expectation that you would give alms if you saw someone like that. And so he's sitting there expecting to receive something from Peter when Peter says these words, silver or gold I do not have. But what I have... What I have is so far superior. What I have will give you life and give it to you new. What I have to give you is eternal life. And he says that, he didn't say those words, but what, that's tantamount to what actually happens because he says to this man who's been crippled from birth, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He not only walks, but you heard the kids sing about it, he dances. Tell me, if you had been crippled from birth and you are given ability to walk now, aren't you going to celebrate that? Aren't you going to be a changed person? This guy's totally changed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And in his healing was also salvation because he was healed in the name of Jesus Christ that gave him a whole brand new identity and all new gifts to be shared with the world. God has given you gifts to share with the world. Would the ushers come forward to receive our tithes, our gifts, and our votive offerings this morning? We have been blessed to be a blessing. Gracious God in heaven, you have gifted us in so many diverse and wonderful ways, many of which we don't even realize, but you give us all the good gifts in life, Lord, and so we give you thanks. We also return a portion of that which you have given to us back into your hands here today, and we ask your blessings upon these gifts. We also ask your blessings upon those that bring them, and Lord, we, we pray that uh, with these gifts and with these givers that you would uh, use us to accomplish what you would have us to do in your holy name. For you are God and there is no other. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.
I invite you all to be seated. Thank you, choir. That was amazing. Uh, you don't have to sit because we're going to invite everyone to stand for the, <laughs> the gospel reading. Our gospel message today comes to us from the gospel of Luke. Dr. Luke, in his 19th chapter, writes these words. Jesus entered into Jericho and was passing through. A man there was named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy, and he wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached that spot, 
He looked up and said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mother, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and he said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor and if I had cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. And so ends the reading of this, his holy word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. And I invite you to pray along with me, please. God of hope and God of glory, God of grace, God of forgiveness, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the gift of your holy word today, and we ask that you would emblazon this particular word upon each and every one of our hearts, that we might be and become like Zacchaeus, a son of Abraham, a child of Abraham, a child of the living God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. For it is in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen. Well, we're in this study called Believe. <clears throat> and this is our fifth week of the study. And we've been asking a key question each week. We've had a key idea. And we've had a key verse. Today's key question is, who am I? Who are you? Uh, in the early service, we sang a song, Who Am I, that God should look upon me. Think about me. That's an amazing thing. The, the creator of heaven and earth thinks about you individually. Who are you that he would do such a thing? In the first week, we uh, asked the question, uh, who is God really? And we, we said that uh, there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We asked the question the second week, does God care about my life? And we answered the question that yes, indeed, God does care about us uh, in my daily life. And then we asked, uh, where do we get salvation? And the answer to that was we have our salvation in Christ Jesus. Last week when Don Scandal was here, my good friend and my partner in ministry for many years, uh, he spoke to you about the living word, the Bible. God's word so that we can know God's will for our lives. And today's key question is, who am I? We've been building up to this day. We have come into this relationship with this God who wants the best for me then. He is the one true God. And I give, give allegiance to him in my life. I know now how to discover his will through his word. And so who have I become as a result of this? That's really the question that we ask, that I ask myself, and I would think that you would ask of yourselves as well. And, and that's kind of a difficult question to answer until we look at this. As we look at the work that we're doing, we come down to this key idea, I believe that I am significant because of my position as a child of God. I am significant not because of my performance, but because of my position as a child of God. But how does this happen, you might ask? Well, God does it. In fact, Jesus does it for us. And Jesus said these words himself in, in John's Gospel, the first chapter, which is our memory verse for this week. He says this, Yet to all who did receive him, Jesus, to those who believed in his name, Jesus' name, he gave the right, or really the word here, power, to become children of God. The power to become children of God. Psychologists tell us that some of the factors that we need to have uh, for self-esteem, a worthy self-esteem, is to feel loved, to have a sense of purpose, to feel sec secure, to feel significant, in other words, there's a meaning for my life, and then to have a sense of belonging. When I recognize that I am a child of the living God, 
That gives me all of those things. I'm significant. There's a plan and a purpose for my life. I am loved, loved like nobody else. And there's a power in that. There's a power in identifying with the one who gives life to anyone who would receive it in Jesus Christ. Um, living into our identities is important. If I'm a good Steeler fan, I'm going to have Steeler attire when I go to the games. Am I not? I'm going to really support. I'm going to really rave. I'm going to really get into it. If I'm a good Pirate fan, Wednesday night we'd have been glued to our seats and, and hoping for and pushing for a hit, a home run, you know, something, right? We, 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 we were, wow, did we get a nasty one on Wednesday night? But we identify with them, and we're in with them, and we use all of our resources, our wills, to think that we can make things happen. I was saying to the kids today, when, when I travel, I travel with my passport because I want to get back into this country. I'm, a, I'm from this country. I'm proud to be from this country, but I want to get back in. I want to see the world, but I want to be able to get back in because I de identify with this country, identify as a citizen of the United States, and I'm proud to be an American. I saw people traveling with, you know, different uh, sport hats on as we were traveling, you know, down to St. Lucia. When we got there, we saw their national pride, um, most of them with these uh, pitons, the, uh, the twin uh, mountains that go right to the sea, and beautiful. And I would identify with that, with them as well. We went uh, on this vacation, and one of the things that Dottie and I always do is we always look for a place to worship. But we were at this resort. We didn't have our own wheels. And uh, it was Sunday morning. I got up early. I made the coffee, and I started praying for Holiday Park United Methodist Church. I started praying for my, uh, my friend, Don Scandrel, who I knew would be here bringing a good word. And I also recognized that it was World Communion Sunday. And, and I was uh, saddened that, that I was not going to be able to participate in communion until I realized, wait a minute, I'm a pastor in the United Methodist Church. No matter where I am, I can worship, and I, all I need is two or more gathered in, in his name. And, and so at breakfast, we, we went to this beautiful breakfast, all-you-can-eat kind of a thing. And I'd said to the people traveling with us, which was my daughter and her husband, our friends uh, Tom and Pat Bishop and uh, Dottie and I. And we're sitting at this table and I said, before we eat, today is World Communion Sunday and I want to bring that up and remember that and we're gonna have communion before we eat. And my, my daughter Lauren here, she had these eyes like, oh dad. <laughs> and her husband was like, I hope it's quick. <laughs> you know? But he didn't say it, but his eyes said it. And it was, it was quick. And I, I know that you're all saying, hey, it's getting near the time. There's only five more minutes, Tony. I hope it's quick. Well, we'll try to make it quick. But we celebrated World Communion Sunday there at the table. And every place that we would eat on the island, that no matter what restaurant we were in, all six of us would gather our hands together and we would bless our server, we would bless that restaurant, we would bless the people of the country, and we would ask God's blessing upon us. Our identity is in Jesus Christ. And, uh, and we're not afraid to profess that or to proclaim that. So early, before we even got there, my daughter, who had been her, there for her honeymoon three years prior, had gone on a tour, and they went snorkeling at the sugar beach at the base of the Piton Mountains, these twin peaks. And uh, it impressed her so much that she wanted to go back with that same person same proprietor, and she wanted to take us with her. And so all six of us chartered the boat and uh, included in our passage, it was $100 US each, so $600 they, they made that day. And uh, we got on their boat from our resort, and they took us and they showed us the islands and they brought us to Sugar Beach at the base of the Pitons. And we were able to snorkel right there. And part of the deal was that we got lunch from his mother, who was the chef of the restaurant that was right near that beach. Only she's working for herself now, so she was the former chef there. And I'll tell you what, what a meal. 
And it was all local stuff. And it was flavors that we had never uh, tasted. It was just terrific. But before the meal, uh, again, we gathered hands. My daughter rolled her eyes like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. And we prayed. And we prayed a blessing on that village. We prayed a blessing on the people of St. Lucia. We prayed a blessing on Solomon, uh, who was our uh, proprietor, who took us Solomon tours. And his sister, Benita, and his fiance, Marla. And we prayed this, this prayer of blessing upon them. And you could see them be visually changed. Then we ate this sumptuous meal. We had this great time together. And one by one, they came to me and they said, well, you're a pastor. I said, yeah. Well, what does it mean to be delivered? And how do I do that? And, and, and Dottie's in my ear. She's saying, they want to be saved. They want, they want to know how to be saved. And, I, and, and so I'm asking them questions. And Dottie was right. Only as I asked them questions, I found out that they were all baptized as Christians. They were all uh, members of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is a big presence down there. Only they watch television, they see evangelical channels and things like that, and they see that you must be delivered, you know, and that you need to be taken from the hands of Satan and all that. And they were wondering how they could do that. What's it mean to be delivered? And so I asked them questions about faith. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe that he came here? Do you believe that? And they did. They believed in all those things, but they weren't maybe living into it. You know what I mean? They weren't using it in a powerful way. And so they were really asking to be baptized. Only in the United Methodist Church, we strongly believe in never baptizing someone a second time. And the reason for that is, in the baptism that we perform, we don't perform it, it's God that's doing the action. So when we have a baby up here who can't make a decision for themselves, and we baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, That child doesn't make that decision. And honestly, sometimes the parents only do that because it's a cultural thing, because they did it. But God's salvific action is working in that child. And God keeps all his covenants, even if they don't. And so we count on God's salvific work as being real in the lives of all the people of God and therefore, we won't rebaptize someone. But we'll remember a baptism. And we'll recommit. And I explained all this to them. And I told them about uh, the prophet Ezekiel, who, while the people of Israel were wayward and far from doing the things that God had asked them to do, the prophet Ezekiel speaks to the nation of Israel, saying these words words of God. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will remove your heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. I will pour my spirit into you and cause you to follow my laws and my decrees. You will be my people, and I will be your God. And I explained to them that it's a God thing, that salvation is always a God thing. And just like in today's verse. Whoever calls upon his name, he will give them the right, the power to be children of God. The right and the power means that I need to do something to exercise that. I need to receive it. Then I need to believe it and live into that new identity, this new life in Christ. So I asked them, I said, do you want this? And there were four of them. Solomon, his sister Benita, his his fiance Marley, and a cousin that showed up there at the beach, Martin. All four of them said, yes, they did. I said, well, now we're standing at a beach, and here's all this water. And I said, do we have water? (laughs) And they brought me a bottle of water. And I opened the cap. And I took the bottle and I said, Jesus says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will remove your heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. I will pour my spirit in you and cause you to follow my laws and my decrees. I will be your God 
and you will be my people. Then we blessed each one of them with hands on and, and remember their baptism in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And you could see new life in their eyes. You could see them wanting and thirsting for more of God. Asking me what, what our website was and are we on TV? I said, yeah, we're on TV. You can actually watch my website. Here it is right here. It's not my website. Holiday Park United Methodist Church dot. You can check us out. But I don't want you to be United Methodists. I want you to be good Catholics. I want you to go and plug back into that church that you were baptized in. I want you to live the life and the identity of Christ. See, every one of us who are baptized by these waters, every one of us who are, are confirmed, we have that power. To, to give new life, like just like Peter when he was walking, to, I don't have gold or I don't have silver, but what I do have, I give to you freely in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You are healed in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Walk in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You have new life. Not just pastors. Dottie could have done that better than me. My daughter could have done it better than me. In fact, she did it in a different way. Because we went on that tr uh, snorkeling trip on Wednesday. We got back to our resort, and my daughter and her husband and my wife and myself and our friends, the bishop, we drummed up business for these people. And my daughter went out yesterday, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, with uh, eight other people going on these trips. So their business was, was booming. And we told everyone at the, at the resort that we were eating dinner with and things like that. We have our identity in Christ Jesus. That means the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is with us. And when we act in the world in that identity, we can be proud. Because that identity gives new life. And that identity changes the world. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, you are God alone. But you are not an alone God. You invite us in. You invite us to participate in the body of Christ in such a way that you give us gifts to be used and to spread the gospel throughout the world. Grant in these your people the wisdom, the want to, and the ability to share the message of good news so that those people that know us will know that our God truly is God, all to the glory of God. For it's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Our... Uh, Closing hymn today is hymn number 206. I want to walk as a child of the light. Please stand and sing it with me.
Mr. Ryan, if you'd leave that last slide up there. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light in the city of God. Shine in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Allow that to happen in your life. May the identity that is in you, the identity of Jesus Christ, shine out from you in such a way that people will know that your God truly is God, all to his glory. Go in his peace. Go in his likeness and serve him always in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us in worship today. And remember, our prayer is that you would be blessed and strengthened by the power of Jesus Christ in your life and that you would live a life of abundance and fellowship, joy, and liberty. Holiday Park Church is here for you, and we are more than the church. We are a fellowship of believers coming together to declare the glory of the Lord and celebrate Jesus as King. We study the Word, we practice what we learn, and in the process, we grow together, all to the glory of God. May God richly bless you.